All right, this is your first look at the body we've chosen to go on the vehicle. You can see here that, you know, it's a Celica. I've, you must be wondering what all this stuff is, except for the experienced folk out there. This is something called Fast Mask, Parma. You can see Liquid Mask here by Parma International. Uh, what it is, is a painting solution where it's, it's a rubber. So if you want to do any kind of custom jobs or uh, any kind of custom painting, you can apply this inside rubber mask and then cut it away where you want to put in your designs and uh, paint over it. And then when you're done painting whatever you want, you can peel it off, paint the rest of it. Pretty neat, huh? All right, so I guess this, uh, this video is really just going to be a quick one on uh, the types of, of uh, scoring that I'm doing and, and, you know, just marking out your designs. This is a good time to mention that I've actually never done this before uh, and it's a good idea for those who uh, want to try this. You, you can kind of see how a first timer would go about it. Now what I've done is I've already painted it. This is actually a couple of days worth of drying here. It dries to a thick skin. And I took my marker, I've scored out this flame job that I want on the Celica. Okay. Now all I'd simply do is, is you can see the outlines that I've done here. And then I took a really sharp knife, like so. Made sure the end was uh, snapped off and brand new. And I was just scoring out very slowly the, uh, the outlines of the things that I've done already. So if I wanted a small flame on the side, if you're good at flames, and I'm no expert, that's, by, that's for sure. You can see just with the sharp knife, I'm scoring out the design of the flame the way I think it would want to go. Okay, I'll just do this here relatively quick, but not too quick. Don't want to rush it and wreck it. Make sure to be connecting the dots or the points so when you remove the masking, it will actually come out nice and even. The tip of the knife, start to peel it back. You can see here, it actually peeling out and exposing the under plastic. Just make sure to clean out the little bits there so it's a nice sharp line. You can see here where I can actually paint, and it's going to be the front of the body. Now I've already covered off the windshields and the side windows and whatnot with the actual stickers that came with it, but now uh, I'm able to start painting my flame job. I'm excited to see how that's going to work. But, I'm not going to show you any more of this until later. Let's get on to the electronics. So, the receiver and transmitter we've chosen to go on this project is a Spectrum-based uh, unit. You can see here it says DX3S DSM Sports System. Uh, this is a 2.4 gigahertz uh, three-channel radio. Uh, you know, trigger and steering, really smooth. I don't mind it at all. Nice antenna on there. Uh, auxiliary throttle trim and steering trim right there. Uh, not too bad. Got a digital readout. You can see there. There we go. You can see the digital readout. Uh, the bonus about this system is that it actually comes with something called telemetry. Now this can be used with your electronic kit or your nitro kit. What is telemetry? Uh, basically, uh, you know, one unit sending a signal back and forth from the transmitter to the receiver uh, about uh, individual characteristics of the car. Uh, for example, this here is a heat sensor for an electric motor. Uh, it comes with the SR3300T, 3300T. Uh, nice little unit, digital, small antenna, but it has a really long range on it. I'm not sure what it is, but, you know, again, technical stuff that I can get into later. No need to now. Uh, so let's get this system set up. I'm looking forward to putting it into the TT01R drift and, uh, you know, basically utilizing some of these things to help us uh, with a good digital 2.4 system. All right, so now we're on to the electronics of the vehicle. You can see here that I've actually changed a little bit. I just want to point something out because I had a good, a good bud on YouTube show me that uh, this was actually put on backwards. This is the steering arm. In my earlier video, I showed that it was uh, up here, but it was actually on an angle. Now, of course, when you have a servo arm that's controlling your steering, you want to have it as straight as possible so when the tires are turning, it's actually got maximum torque from that... Uh, 
servo arm. The other thing that somebody else pointed out to me is that I did end up taking out the servo saver and replacing it with the horn. Now again, that's my risk. If I hit the servo really hard, it runs a chance of actually burning it out. But uh, you know, instead of the server, servo saver being a little bit more cumbersome and a little bit slower, which is good for a beginner like me, maybe I should have kept it on there, uh, but uh, I figured just a little bit faster response time, who knows, that might save you from a crash right there. So here we go, uh, the electronics portion. Remember I've got a nine turn brushless motor uh, paired up with a Speed Passion uh, Driftmaster Turbo ESC. Now this, can, this is a, a pair that's built for each other. Uh, with the LiPo battery, the 5300 milliamp hour, this is going to be a, a, a great match. I actually phoned Speed, uh, Speed Passion to find out what they suggested. And this is one of the things for longevity, and because I'll, I'll be filming with this in the future, uh, this is the type of battery that I was going to want to go with. Now, I'll be using the uh, thermal gauge and the t uh, for the motor here with the ES, or not the ESC, but uh, the actual um, telemetry system, the receiver here. Uh, definitely going to be a bonus. I don't have a spot here to uh, actually uh, put this in simply because we went with the telemetry receiver here. It's just a little bit too wide, but any normal receiver would have fit just fine. Uh, there is a spot down here. You can see that this telemetry receiver fits in as a piece of cake. Of course, when I'm saying it, it doesn't, something's in the way. And just like that. Okay, so it fits in there, no problem. I'll put some double-sided tape on it uh, and make sure that the antenna is completely out of the way of any moving parts. Uh, but it should fit in there fine. I'm going to zip tie up this extra wire right here, uh, make sure it's all plugged in. And uh, you know, we're getting close to testing time. So now that I'm at the end of the vehicle here uh, for wiring and whatnot, when I do this off camera, why don't we have a look at finishing the rest of the Celica body? But my first coat is actually a mirror chrome. So I'm actually gonna have uh, chrome flames that go down the side of the car. That's just my first coat. Remember, all this is rubberized, so I can peel this off, uh, except for the stuff that I had exposed. So that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, time to move to the next step. And here is the first coat of paint. I'm using a Tamiya color. Just a regular old, regular old blue. This is a first level paint job. So you can see the chrome flames have worked in nicely. The windows are still covered up. And I'm using just one coat here. I'll apply the second coat and it'll get a little bit darker and uh, then I can start on the windows. Okay so the last coat I put underneath was a silver base. Now you can see it's still kind of see-through. I'll probably apply one more coat. Not really necessary but you can see it's a really nice blue sheen there and the chrome flames. Yeah. Alright, next step. I'm going to add that one coat next and then I'm going to start cutting it out. Alright, we might as well have one more electronic shot while I'm putting it together. You can see here uh, that this is the Spectrum receiver that I was pointing out earlier. I'm going to put it in uh, the bind plug here so I can link it with this controller, the DX3S. Right, we can see here, I figured you'd want to be here for the first uh, ESC uh, powering anyway. So here we go, we're going to turn it on. This little fan should start running. Perfect. You can see here, well you guys probably can't very briefly, but there you go. The orange light inside is showing me that it's in bind mode. On the controller itself, we can go down to bind. Push it. Goes with the controller, and it is now bound. So I can take this off here, turn it off, remove the bind plug, plug in the steering. Now when I turn on the ESC and power it again, I should be able to move these tires for the first time. There we go. There we go, our first movement. 
I'll be adjusting endpoints. And uh, let's just give her a little bit of gas. 